Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today it is back India and Pakistan a continuing story. This is going to be the part 4 or maybe the last episode of the reaction series. And if you guys want to see the first episode, check it out down below. I'm gonna put the description, I mean the description, I'm gonna put the link in the description down below. I'm sorry. So yeah, this is part 4. I'm gonna start my recording. 2,000 years later. Okay, here we go guys. Like and subscribe to my video like this. And yeah, I'm gonna try to not pause that much. But hey, I'm very, very excited to finish this one so that I can go react to some other videos. So yeah, I'm gonna like and subscribe. Thank you for 308 subscribers. Let's go. One of India's biggest ambitions beside an internal integration through highways, railroads and security is to find a way out. It wants to become a big market, producer and leader with global recognition. And to do so it has to find ways out into the world. One of the things it needs to do most is to feed the increasingly high energy demand of its growing population. Renewable energy should be an option but even though India makes promises on that sector it mostly slacks behind. What it therefore craves the most is natural gas and oil. And not too far away, there's a lot of natural gas amongst the stands. Uh, Tajikistan, the Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan sit on some of the largest natural gas reserves. In Talking about Turkmenistan, back in, I don't know when, but they actually said um, the Soviet Union actually dug a hole in Turkmenistan and where they were in a hurry and they tried to cover up the the hole so they tried to pour light it all up so that the gas will be gone but the problem was um the gas started to to go up in flames and until now it's still in flames so yeah that's amazing because that's natural gas the world and all of them are eager to sell. Russia unfortunately has enough of its own. Europe has several obstacles in the way. Mm. The Middle East has its own. There's a mm, large Saudi desert Arabia. between it and China so the ideal destination would be India. Remember that corridor which most invaders of India used to use? That same corridor is now one of India's biggest interests to get out into the world. Both India and the Central Asian stands want to have closer ties. 70% mm. of India's energy comes from abroad which is why India would like to be able to buy gas from the stands. Except for Pakistan. The stands, for their part, are landlocked nations who would enjoy a route to the sea, something India could provide. Mm. India and the stands have very warm diplomatic relations as both sides see nothing but benefits in an internal integration and closer ties. India would be Central Asia's gateway to the world mm. and Central Asia would provide energy and markets. However, someone stands in the way of that common dream. A gas pipeline, rail track and highway connecting the two regions would have to go through Pakistan and Afghanistan which Pakistan has consistently made impossible, even though Pakistan itself would be set up to profit from such an arrangement. On the other side of the subcontinent, there would have been another source of energy. Burma has some of the largest natural gas fields in Southeast Asia. Both countries quickly agreed to build a pipeline and a trade deal. However, oh. this time something else came in the way. The pipeline would have gone through Bangladesh, to which Bangladesh agreed. When a pipeline oh. goes through a country, that country deserves regular payouts in transit fees by both the recipient and deliverer to the pipeline. And because Bangladesh is a poor country, it negotiated for a high <laughs> transit fee. Money that caused the project to fail. Rather than trying to smooth the situation out by offering economic relief and agreements to Bangladesh, India instead proposed an enormous large pipeline that would have gone around Bangladesh. The consequent constant year-long tedious haggling eventually was too much for the Burmese who instead made a deal selling their gas through a pipeline to China. To In China, okay. That is a loss of opportunity there because of one country. Oof.
In many ways, this failure to agree serves as an example of how India treats Bangladesh like a poor house and how these two countries that could both profit from a closer integration of trade and agreements fail to do so. Mm. And on the other side of the subcontinent, it shows Rivals. how deep the conflicts in that region go for India and who has what interests where. As Pakistan continues to control and shut down that corridor, there will be increasingly more potential for conflict in that region, Three which enemies. leaves India with only one other way to get out and seek more influence in the world. Getting out by sea. With 7,516 kilometers or 4,671 miles of coastline, you would imagine that India is the unquestionable power in the Indian Ocean. However, that is not the case, what? and you will soon see why. One thing that can be said with certainty about India and the Indian Ocean is that it is in a better position than its rival. Pakistan has 1,050 kilometers or 650 miles of coastline. Oh. Its coastline might be closer to the important ports of the Gulf. However, most of that coastline is in Balochistan, a rebellious province with armed insurrections and a struggle for independence. Balochistan, okay. So that's a big problem for them because if that if they can't control the other part of the shore, <laughs> they only get like a few miles of it. I'm not I don't know how long, but look by the looks I said knowing that the the rebellious group are over here they hold this so pakistan only controls this small part of the shore so yeah to the important ports of the Gulf. However, most of that coastline uh, is in see? Balochistan, a rebellious province with armed insurrections a and a struggle province. for independence. Uh. The Baloch coastline is also believed to contain natural gas fields. Pakistan's solution to try to keep this coastline and internal security within Balochistan is an extremely risky one. They outsourced the problem to the Chinese. They sold the natural harbors to China and permitted China to build a highway from Kashgar to Gwadar, connecting the isolated western Chinese regions to the Indian Ocean. This may bring investments, but is also extremely risky for Pakistan, as it makes China continuously invested and interested in the security of the region. If why did they remove Nepal? Oh, why? They're still important. China is invested in the security of that region. The population may resent such. Additionally, who is to say that China will always side with the central government in the future? If the Chinese harbor in Gwadar becomes more important than the needs of the Pakistani government, China might be okay with Balochi separatists as long as they don't touch the Chinese harbor. India, meanwhile, is trying to outfox them both with treaties with Iran to build ports, highways, and possibly even pipelines into ah. Afghanistan through Iran. But back to India. For it, control over the Indian Ocean is not only vital to its security interests, but essential to its ambitions of becoming a superpower. To the west lies the Arabian Sea, to the east lie the Straits of Malacca, which lead to the South China Sea. This connects some of the largest global trade routes in the world between the Middle East, Africa, Europe, to Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia, and Australia. Half the world's trade in oil is conducted on Indian Ocean sea routes and the total value of all trade conducted on the Indian Ocean routes probably lies in the trillions. Like, um, this kind of looks like the how back in the day tr the trade is being done. Back in the day, like the, the Ottoman Empire, the Roman Empire, they always own the Mediterranean. The the few parts so because because look at the the empires of the roman empire and the ottoman empire they always ha own the land near the shore so that they can tax the boats that is um going through the their territory okay i'm sorry i'm trying to fix my english but Coming back to the trade, um, back in the day, they don't have maps, so they use landmarks. So if they see land, they're still near the land. If, they, if they're far away to the land, they're going to get lost. So, so yeah, they always come near to shore. If they're not, they're going to be in trouble because they're going to search for land. And what if they... 
they get lost and the problem is they, they have trading to do so yeah I'm sorry for my bad English I'm, I'm practicing okay I'm practicing and most of this trade goes through a place that has yes. for a very long time Sri been ignored. Sri, Sri Lanka is of Sri similar Lanka. geopolitical significance as the Strait of Hormuz, mm. the Malacca Straits or the Suez Canal. However, for decades nobody cared much Sri about Lanka. that place as it found itself in a decades-long civil war with the Tamil Tigers that nobody wanted to get involved with. The Tamil Tigers would open fire on ships that came too close, so most maritime Whoa. trade networks went far around Sri Lanka. However, now that the civil war is over, Sri Lanka is back in the limelight and free countries are lining up for its favor and to try to move it into their own sphere of influence. China already built a harbor there but the crown jewel in what Sri Lanka has to offer is a little known place called Trincomalee. Trincomalee is the third largest natural harbor in the world as well as one of the deepest harbors in the world. Oh. This means it is one of the few places in the Indian Ocean that can be used as a submarine base. Oh. Add to that the fact that it lies at the convergence of four out of seven of the world's most important trade routes and you have the attention of every major power that would like to have a base there. Sri Lanka may at first seem to be in an enviable position where everyone would like to offer it whatever they can to be its friend but Sri Lanka also has to be careful to not be taken advantage of. Yeah because so the, the most powerful countries can can take advantage to your country what if they can annex you what if they can control your government so yeah United States, maybe the British Empire, maybe China. The geopolitical interests of free powers collide in this region. Indian, Chinese and American. For the Americans, oh, yeah, Indian, the region yeah. is vital to its interests in the Middle East, as it is the Pacific fleet that is used to secure American interests in the region. As such, the Americans have a large military presence in the region and have to continuously secure safe passage for its Pacific too. fleet into the Indian Ocean. Mm. The Chinese want to control the Indian Ocean. As mm. such, they are building ports and navy bases throughout the region and manage to get a head start over the Indians. The Indians, for their part, have recently stepped up by increasing investment in Sri Lanka and by building its first foreign military bases. The Indian Navy is also being steadily increased and built up as India pursues the role of being the dominant power in an ocean named after the subcontinent. Mm. Future peace? I don't know. Only 4% of India's exports go to its direct and neighbors, Nepal. and only 0.5% of its imports come from there. Despite founding SARC, an organization for trade and cooperation for the Indian subcontinent modeled on the European Union, the countries in it were unable to overcome geopolitical differences and conflicts to build an internal integration of trade and supply with the common Bhutan. interests among nations on the subcontinent. This is a hard start for a country in the world stage, as it requires it to go out and find external integration with foreign trade partners and allies. In that pursuit, India has some great advantages. It is seen and by and large is one of China's biggest regional rivals. As such, India is the place to go if you seek to find a partner to work with within competition America. to China. Its role as a country fighting Islamic terrorism and being a geopolitical rival of China resulted in ever increasing and closer ties to the United States. In seeking outside markets, one of its closest friends has been Japan. Mm. With who they attempted to build a maritime trade network into Africa to rival China. India is also an outside quasi-observing member of ASEAN, with the intention of establishing an East Asian to India trade corridor that could rival China. It is also building ever closer ties to Australia by forming an organization for the surveillance and safety members. and control of the Indian Ocean. Look, the India started building ever closer ties to Israel with common strategic and military interests. Israel provides military training and support in anti-terror tactics and signed its largest arms deal with India, where Russian Kalashnikovs are being phased out and replaced by Israeli weapons. This close and ever-increasing military cooperation between Israel and India is largely unnoticed by the world, and even more curious when you keep in mind that India has a close relationship with Iran. Good relationship with other countries can lead to prosper. So yeah, if you have tension with other countries, that could lead you getting sanctioned or you getting annex or invaded so yeah which is mainly due to Iran's relationship with Pakistan being 
icy at best. Yeah. And in Europe, India is building ever closer ties with France while retaining a friendly relationship with Russia. So of all countries of the subcontinent, India has one of the easiest foreign policy positions to be in. It's welcomed practically everywhere and has many things to look forward to. Vietnam. Pakistan has a far harder time on the global yeah. stage. When it gained independence, its founders, in a very smart move, allied the country with the United States. Both the Soviet Union and India wished to undermine Pakistan and possibly even have it dissolved. Allying with the United States gave the country a security shield against that. But its consequent foreign engagements have greatly isolated Pakistan and damaged its reputation in the world. The destabilization of Afghanistan and their control to some Islamic terrorist or any type of terrorists so yeah that that's not that's bad that's pretty pretty bad for Pakistan side while India is prospering Pakistan is kind of struggling because who would like to be friends with a country where it controls terrorists so yeah for Islamist militias had far-reaching consequences. Yeah, One of the first too, things the Taliban that. did after they captured Kabul in 1998 was to storm the Iranian embassy and massacre its staff. This was only 20 years after the Iranian hostage crisis, so most of the world reacted with a, well, how do you like it when it's done to you, and forgot about it. But it is important to remember that the Taliban, who were just as brutal as its modern offshoots, launched a campaign of extermination against the Shias and conducted terrorist attacks in Iran. All of it with support of the Pakistani state and with such brutality that Iran almost invaded Afghanistan themselves between 1998 and 2001. The Iranians have neither forgotten nor forgiven the Pakistanis for their role in all of this Saddam and prefer Zain. working with India instead. When the Americans came to Afghanistan, the Pakistanis offered themselves as trusted allies in that conflict. However, the money and weapons the Americans gave to Pakistan were used to enlarge the Pakistani nuclear weapons program mm. instead, and much See? worse, to support the Taliban, mm. who the Americans were fighting themselves. Continued Pakistani support for the Taliban and destabilization of Afghanistan caused an opium crisis and Taliban offshoots that destabilized Pakistan itself and caused more and more anger towards it by the Americans, Afghans and Iranians. But to the Pakistani leadership, a stable Afghanistan was a threat to its own security, so they proceeded, thereby however pushing Afghanistan more and more into India's sphere of influence. India is by now building infrastructure oh. and training the Afghan army and is the most likely country to take a leading role in that region once the Americans pull out. And it was within that context that the United States experienced one of their biggest diplomatic embarrassments in 2008, when Islamist terror groups conducted massive terror attacks with many casualties against the Indian embassy in Kabul and the Indian city of Mumbai. Oh. Years later, the Snowden leaks revealed what many had suspected. The Americans had started getting suspicious over their supposed allies years before. So they had started surveilling the equipment they gave to the Pakistanis to fight Islamists and found that the Pakistanis were giving American assets to Islamic terror groups and worse, that these American assets had been used in those terror attacks against India. Yeah. But instead of condemnation by India, what happened instead is a strengthening of ties between the two, as India offered a more reliable friendship. And through that, Pakistan lost its American friends, most of its influence in Afghanistan, and gave its arch enemy more See? power. Pakistan even has trouble finding new friends. When it helped the North Koreans develop a nuclear program, most of East Asia turned its back on them. See, look at that. If you have tension, you're not going to be prosperous. But if you're friendly to other countries, you can be prosperous. So look at that. You're helping North Korea for, for its nuclear arsenal. So me, meaning that means the other Asian countries will hate you because it's North Korea. Even possible new friends such as Russia and Turkey turned their backs on Pakistan yeah. since both these countries have terrorism problems and want nothing to do with countries that support terror groups. Yeah. Leaving Pakistan with only two friends, a Saudi Arabia to which Pakistan is only as useful as its nuclear weapons program in relation to Iran's nuclear weapons program, and China to which Pakistan is less of a friend but more like a stick 
of which it can poke yeah. India. Pakistan's friendship with China is also strenuous since most of the Islamic world is not happy about China's treatment of Muslims. And this consequently made Pakistan even fewer friends in the Islamic club of countries. That's in a big policy, problem. In foreign Pakistan stands alone and has the most difficult position on the subcontinent. It is distrusted and isolated and has to rebuild trust wherever it can. Going forward, these countries will face continuous challenges. You can't like isolate like North Korea because you're a huge country where peop your people can can rebel. But for North Korea, they it's so hard to rebel in North Korea because if you try to rebel, they can you can get executed. So yeah. India has ambitions even, of becoming a super even in Pakistan, but it's a little bit harder in North Korea. While being hampered by problems such as basic sanitation and catastrophic pollution at home, Bangladesh will have to find a way to overcome its crippling poverty. Sri Lanka will have to be careful to not be taken advantage of by outsiders who seek influence in the region for mm. its advantageous position. And Pakistan is one of the most distrusted places in the world, for which it however has nobody else to blame but itself. Mm. What they all have in common is that they look at external integration and outside solutions for their internal demands and struggles. Thereby by continuing a further disintegration of the subcontinent. The Indian subcontinent is a place where all its inhabitants would benefit greatly if they could put their conflicts aside. But that, for the foreseeable future, is not going to happen as the politics of antagonizing and conflict are set to continue. Wow. That end? In the next video, we will oh. be talking about Turkey in a one or two hour long video about its role in the 20th century, oh. the founding of the Republic and how its ambitions will shape our futures. Uh -huh. There will also be a shorter video about the American lens and how it distorts perception of the world and can thereby contribute to conflicts. If you wish to have a say in which topics I should cover in the future, you should consider becoming a patron as the patrons are who vote from a long list of topics on what I should cover next. I hope you all liked this video summary. I tried to not go into too much detail. If you believe there should have been more detail, I could do some more videos later, going more into detail about every single country individually. I certainly now own the books to do so. Speaking of which, you will find a bibliography in the description of all the books used. Don't forget to keep this channel running by sharing the video. Okay, so let's end it there. So, wow. We are done with the series. Wow. So that's very, very interesting. Um, now we know Pakistan is very untrusted by other countries and India is prospering because of their, their relations. They're, they have good relations with other countries. So yeah, I gotta give you subscribe there, Kraut. Big shout out to Kraut. Wow, that is very, very interesting. So yeah, thank you for watching everybody. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And the he they actually have more videos. Like not really a lot. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23. So yeah. The he let the last time he posted was one, a month ago so obviously it's hard to make these type of videos because he has to animate it he has to edit it so yeah thank you for watching everybody like and subscribe i'm gonna actually um search for more videos that i want to learn about and yeah after this video i don't know why should i just go react to another crowd video i don't like that though because if i'm gonna keep on reacting to his content that would be stealing okay that would be stealing so i'm gonna try to skip him for a while maybe a month or maybe yeah maybe a month i'll skip skip his channel for a month or maybe yeah i don't know when but hey like and subscribe maybe i'll try to react to maybe knowledge or uh, maybe an oversimplified video so yeah thank you for watching everybody like and subscribe over videos like this i'm going to go sleep because um what time is it it's it's 10 so yeah thank you for watching everybody like and subscribe 
goodbye.